Good morning. My name is June Kim. I'm the acting United States Attorney for the Southern District of New York. We are here today to announce more charges and convictions in our ongoing investigation into corruption at the NYPD's Gun License Division. We continue today what we started a year ago. Last June, we announced charges against two members of the NYPD's Gun License Division for accepting bribes in exchange for licenses. We were not done. Our investigation continued, as did our determination to aggressively pursue public corruption wherever we find it, and to follow the facts wherever they may lead us. And this is where they have led. Alleged corruption that pervaded the license division up to its senior levels. Alleged corruption that spawned a cottage industry of bribers, masquerading as so-called expediters. The industry of parasitic profiteers allegedly included a number of former police officers, as well as a former Brooklyn assistant district attorney. First, let me identify the people we have charged. We charged and arrested today three former police officers. Lieutenant Paul Dean, who until recently was a second in command at the license division. Former police officer Robert Espinel, who worked in the license division until his retirement last year. And Gaetano Velastro, a former NYPD detective and now a gun license expediter and owner of a gun store. In a separate complaint, we charged John Chambers, a lawyer and a former Brooklyn prosecutor, who advertised himself as the top firearms licensing attorney in New York. In addition to these four individuals charged and arrested today, we unsealed the guilty pleas of former NYPD Sergeant David Villanueva and Frank Suhu, a gun license expediter and former auxiliary member of the NYPD. Villanueva and Suhu have now pled guilty and are cooperating with our office. This is significant. These two, along with former police officer Richard Ochital, who previously pled guilty, have admitted their guilt in court. They've accepted responsibility for their corruption and agreed to tell the truth at trial about what they did and what their fellow officers did. And the information they have provided, along with the other evidence we have gathered, paint a devastating picture of pervasive corruption at the licensing division. Lieutenant Dean, Sergeant Villanueva, Officers Espinal and Ochital, four officers in the license division, whose job it was to ensure that gun licenses were issued properly and issued only to those who should safely get them, were allegedly on the take. They were taking bribes from expediters in just about every form. Good old-fashioned cash, stuffed in envelopes, sometimes hidden in magazines, expensive liquor, luxury watches, free vacations, and even free guns and gun paraphernalia. And what did these officers do in exchange for these bribes? They allegedly sold their oath to serve and protect. They sold their duty to do their jobs. They just issued gun licenses to whoever the bribing expediters brought them without conducting the necessary background checks without questioning their need for a gun license and without following up on major red flags. Over a hundred gun licenses were issued in this problematic way. It included one person who had 10 moving violations and had been the subject of at least four domestic violence complaints, including one in which he allegedly threatened to kill someone. Another person who got a license had prior convictions for criminal possession of a weapon and assault with intent to cause injury. Yet another license holder who had been arrested for brandishing a gun during an assault did not have his gun license revoked. And instead, the gun was returned to him by Officer Espinel, allegedly in exchange for bribes. That person then went on to get arrested again for another assault using a hammer. But none of this troubled or deterred Lieutenant Dean and Officer Espinel. Far from it. They allegedly got more audacious as time went on. They were not satisfied by simply taking bribes for licenses. They saw that the expediters were making more money than they were, sometimes over $10,000 for each license. As Lieutenant Dean put it in a recorded conversation, and I quote, I am done watching people make money off my back. I'm the one who's signing off on everything. 
and watching everybody get cash, hand over fist. Close quote. Driven by this greed, in late 2015, Lieutenant Dean and Officer Espinel decided to retire from the NYPD to become uh, corrupt expediters themselves. But before they left, they allegedly took steps to guarantee the success of their scheme. They offered to give a piece of the action to their colleagues, who would still be at the license division, telling one colleague that his wife should buy a shovel to scoop up all the money they were going to make. While still with the PD, Dean and Espinel even did test runs for clients who were willing to pay, pay for gun licenses, driving them into the underground parking lot at one police plaza, bypassing security so that they could get their licenses with no hassle or wait. They also recruited into their plot former NYP detective and owner of a gun store, Caetano Velastro. Velastro allegedly planned to send potential clients their way in exchange for those customers being sent to Velastro's gun store to buy guns and take firearms training. As I mentioned earlier, former police officers were not the only ones tempted by this scheme to earn riches at the expense of public safety. So was John Chambers, an attorney and former prosecutor at the Brooklyn DA's office. Since at least 2010, Chambers allegedly paid bribes to Office of Villanueva when Villanueva was in the license division. The bribes took the form of cash, of course, but also tickets to Broadway shows, sporting events, expensive meals, and even an $8,000 watch. In exchange, Chambers' clients, who already had gun licenses, when they got in trouble with the law, Villanueva allegedly agreed to look the other way. Instead of revoking their licenses, as at times he should have, Villanueva let them keep their licenses. Or if the licenses were suspended, he would have the term of the suspension shortened. Chambers also used his position in the NYPD to help expedite gun licenses in Nassau County. For cash bribes, Villanueva sent applications from Chambers clients to, NASA, to the Nassau County Police Department under the cover of, the N, of NYPD letterhead, knowing that that would substantially expedite the review of those applications in Nassau. Now this diagram here uh, shows the, the flow of money uh, from uh, bribes from the expediters down here uh, to the police officers. It took the form of cash, liquor, luxury watches, vacations, and then here uh, are the list of the police officers uh, in, their, um, in the hierarchy and the official actions that they took in terms of approving, expediting, uh, and upgrading gun licenses. You'll see the folks in green are people who have pled guilty and are cooperating, and the orange is people who have pled guilty. Public corruption cases are difficult to make, and police corruption cases are particularly so. They take not only doggedness and determination, but because they involve investigating fellow law enforcement officers, they take a deep commitment to doing the right thing, no matter what, without fear or favor. And that is what we had in our law enforcement partners in this investigation. First, I want to thank the FBI, represented here today by William Sweeney, Assistant Director in Charge of the New York office. Our partnership with the FBI is as strong as it has ever been and we continue to work together every day to investigate all types of cases, but in particular, public corruption cases. Specifically, I want to recognize Special Agent in Charge Michael McGarity, Assistant Special Agent in Charge George Fuzami, Supervisory Special Agent Jared Whitmire, and, and Special Agents Joseph Downs, Bard Hubbard, and Michael Buscemi. Second, I want to thank our partners at the NYPD, represented here today by its great commissioner, James O'Neill and the Deputy Commissioner of Legal Matters, Larry Byrne. I specifically want to recognize the Internal Affairs Bureau for their fearless commitment to this investigation. That includes Deputy Commissioner Joe Resnick, Lieutenant Brian Sparber, and Sergeants Mark Klausner and Ted Jeremenko. Let me pause here to say a few words about the NYPD. The NYPD, in our view, is the finest police force in the country, if not the world. They keep us safe every day NYPD officers risk their lives so that the rest of us New Yorkers can go about ours without fear or worry. We all owe them an incredible debt of gratitude. When we announce charges against police officers, as we do today, it is never a good day. But today's charges also show, in my view, 
the strength and greatness of the NYPD. These charges were made possible only because of the commitment of the IAB. The investigation was conduct conducted with the unwavering uh, support of the department's leadership, and the NYPD has taken steps to reform and fix the license division. All of that shows that the NYPD is prepared to police its own and committed to living up to the principle that no one is above the law. And that is a great thing for the NYPD and for the city. Finally, I want to thank the investigators and career prosecutors in my office who have worked on this important case. Assistant U.S. Attorneys Russell Capone, Khan Nowaday, and Lauren Shore, supervised by Andrew Goldstein and Tatiana Martins, the chiefs of our public corruption unit. Our public corruption unit, as most of you know, has been incredibly active and successful over the last few years. And they continue to be as committed as ever to their mission of fighting corruption. For the police officers and expediters charged in this case, the critically important police function of issuing and controlling gun licenses was one they alleged were willing to pervert for personal profit. When police officers violate their oath in this alleged way, they not only betray the public they were sworn to protect, but their fellow officers who do their jobs the right way, day in and day out, remaining faithful to the duties they owe to the public and to each other. Thank you. Now let me bring to the podium um, William Sweeney from the FBI. Thank you, Jim. Good morning. Law enforcement officials are granted authority to uphold the fundamental rule of law. But any abuse of this power, no matter how great or how small, is nothing short of a crime. Today, as detailed by the acting U.S. Attorney, a series of gun expediters and former NYPD officers of various ranks face charges of bribery and conspiracy, among other things, for their alleged role in unjustly approving gun permits and receiving bribes or offering bribes in exchange for special favors. In many cases, as alleged, renewal applications were expedited, incident investigations were resolved more quickly than usual, and beneficial resolutions were reached regarding these incident investigations that might not otherwise have been. As alleged today, the processing of gun permits at the behest of gun expediters did not come without a significant risk to public safety. As alleged in one particular incident, the NYPD's license division hit a roadblock while processing a request for an applicant with a significant criminal history. Instead of denying this individual a license, the approval was pushed through by some involved in this scheme. To make matters worse, the applicant's brother was also approved for a license so that he could purchase a gun on behalf of the applicant without scrutiny from a gun seller who would be required to conduct an FBI background check. This detour in judgment, among other similar decisions by those charged, it is what leads us here today. Not only does the behavior they allege today threaten the safety of our community, it also runs the risk of eroding the public's perception of the law enforcement community overall. It's a narrative we'd like to confront head on and it's actions that we will not tolerate. The NYPD is an exceptional organization. The overwhelming majority of NYPD officers who willingly protect our city every day, no matter what the risk, should not be associated with the select few who as charged placed a higher priority on satisfying their desires than upholding the law. The FBI received significant assistance, essential assistance from the NYPD's Internal Affairs Bureau during the course of the investigation, which should serve as a reminder to everybody of the department's dedication to bringing justice to those who refuse to abide by proper standards of conduct. I'd like to thank our partners involved in this investigation, especially the U.S. Attorney's Office, but in particular the NYPD. Uh, your leadership, uh, your partnership have been exceptional, and we would like to thank you for your service. Thank you, Commissioner. Now brings the podium, uh, Commissioner O'Neill. Hey, good morning, everyone. This case was developed as part of a long-term joint investigation by the NYPD's Internal Affairs Bureau, the FBI, and the U.S. Attorney's Office. I'd like to thank the men and women of the FBI's New York field office, especially Assistant Director in Charge, uh, Bill Sweeney, and the staff of the U.S. Attorney for the Southern District of New York, June Kim, for their integrity and professionalism throughout this investigation. The NYPD has tremendous working relationships with our law enforcement partners at the local, state, and federal levels. So for that, I thank you. 
To be sure, today's announcement is not a happy occasion for any of us in the New York City Police Department. As I speak about all the time, just about every police officer in the NYPD took this job for the right reason, to fight crime and to keep people safe. We took these jobs to make a positive difference in the lives of New Yorkers. We took these jobs to do good. But when we, as an agency or as individuals, fall short of that ambition, when members of our department betray the public's trust through intentional illegal acts, it erodes the confidence, the faith, and the goodwill every other member of the department has worked so hard to earn from the millions and millions of people we dutifully serve every day. As an agency and as a society, we have an obligation to investigate those materials of trust. Under the guidance of Deputy Commissioner Joe Resnick, the NYPD has the most professional internal affairs unit of any police department I know. He and his investigators perform a necessary function, and we always follow a case wherever that has taken us. At the culmination of such investigations, we have an obligation to you to be transparent. We have a duty to explain where your public servants went wrong, what our investigation uncovered, and how we can prevent similar acts from happening again. As I said, the vast majority of the NYPD is comprised of the hardest working men and women of the highest integrity I've ever had the privilege to work alongside. In their good work, their good deeds, their efforts to fight crime and keep people safe, all forging lasting bonds with the people we serve, continue as we speak in every neighborhood in New York City. Thank you very much. I will take a few questions. Um, I'm not going to comment more on um, the Nassau PD beyond what's uh, in the complaint. Um, uh, the, the complaint generally talks about uh, uh, sending uh, applications for Chambers Nassau clients under uh, the letterhead of the NYPD License Division with an understanding that that would uh, result in expedited um, uh, approvals. Um, that's, uh, for the time being, the uh, largely the extent of the allegations in the complaint, um, and we'll leave it at that. Obviously, uh, this investigation, like uh, most, if not all of ours, is ongoing. I'm not going to uh, discuss that either. Uh, the cash transactions, uh, as described in the allegations were, uh, of the complaint, were handed off, as I said, sometimes in envelopes, sometimes uh, stuck inside magazines. I think they were handed to them at various locations. I don't know if uh, there was a, you know, a particular pattern or a particular location that occurred all the time, but uh, uh, whatever's in the complaint is what we're prepared to uh, share with you right now. Uh, I don't think uh, I can. I won't say anything more than what you've recited and what's already part of the public record. As as you saw, we we did issue a statement uh, about our investigation into City Hall. I'm not going to say anything beyond that. Um, yeah, we do recite, and as I I gave a few examples, as did uh, uh, Bill Sweeney of. Um, licenses that were issued to people who should not have had them. Uh, beyond what's in the complaint, I don't know if the uh, police department is prepared to share more, but um, you know, that they're not aware, or I'm not prepared to discuss anything more in terms of specific crimes that may have been committed by any of the guns. Patty? Sorry, I couldn't hear you. I believe the PD has taken uh, significant remedial measures, and I'm uh, yeah, let talk, Commissioner O'Neill talk about that. I can talk uh, about the licenses, and I'll also speak about uh, some of the changes that we've made to the license division. So after extensive review of licenses implicated in this investigation, it's about 448 licensees were identified by AB during the course of the investigation, 
as suspicious or warranting further review. 100 license, licensees, most full and limited carry, were suspended during this investigation. 79 were suspended as a result of the IAB investigation. The other 12 were previously suspended by the license division for unrelated inc incidents prior to the investigation, and nine are pending evaluation. 215 licensees are currently under review by the license division, and 125 licenses were reviewed and found to be issued properly. I'm going to talk a little bit about the changes we made to the uh, significant changes we've made to the license division. So we've replaced all the supervisory staff and uh, we increased the supervision. All personnel at the command level of the division were replaced, including the commanding officer, the exec, and civilian director. And uh, we approved additional staff, including two lieutenants and four sergeants. Uh, centralization of authority to approve applications in contrast to the past practice. Now only the CO and the XO have the authority to approve new pistol applications. Special patrolman applications, upgrades of assisting licenses to a different classification or renewal of an existing license. We've also instituted many preventive measures, preventative measures. Specific measures were taken to prevent a reoccurrence, of course, of what transpired. Is a prohibition of license division access to any third parties acting as agents, facilitators, or expediters, uh, elimination of exceptionally early tours within the license division, and prohibition of access to the license division by any member of the public unless a supervisor is present. A number of other steps that we've taken, but those are the major ones. So significant changes. Graham? Graham? Yes, correct. Uh, Larry, do you have that number? Yeah, sure. That would be helpful, right? Sorry, there's several different categories of licenses. For a full carry license, I believe there are fewer than 3,000 issued. There's a residence license, a business premises license, licenses for shotguns and rifles who are primarily hunters and target shooters. Altogether, I think there are approximately 65 licenses in the different categories. And they all, every license gets reviewed every three years. The license lasts for three years. And then we redo our background check and update our investigation. When were these changes made, including the prohibition on expediting? I'm going to have to get you the chronology of, exact, of exactly when the changes were made. But as soon as we found out of the improprieties within the license division, we took immediate, immediate steps. Over the last right, year? Or immediate steps to make sure it didn't happen Mr. again. Will you be Marcia? releasing an internal investigation? Uh, Hold on, Marsha. I'll get to you in a second, right? I, I didn't know the lieutenant or the sergeant. I did know the CO, and uh, you know, I, I talk about it all the time. I've been a cop for 34 and a half years. And by and large, every cop that I've ever had the opportunity to work with is, uh, takes a job for the right reason. So f for something like this to happen, to, to, to besmirch the names of, uh, and reputations of the other 36,000 uh, hardworking and courageous men and more, or women, it's you know, absolutely appalled. Last question, Mr. Yep. You uh, mentioned you were talking earlier about transparency. Will uh, the department be releasing a written report of uh, the investigation and the measures that you've taken? Yeah, we haven't made that determination yet. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.